Hey guys, it's Joe. Now, I'm a professional Android guy for PocketNow.com, but you might not know I'm also a professional web developer. Now, what's a web developer? Well, he's the guy, or the gal, that takes really nice designs from people with degrees in, uh, in fine arts and turns them into standards-compliant code that you eventually see in your web browser. So that's what this video is going to be about. It's about Android, it's about browsers, but it's about the stock browser that comes with most Android-powered devices, which is really just Google Chrome, and Mozilla Firefox, which is right now in beta on Android, but you probably know it from your desktop. Let's go take a look at why that's important, and more important, which one's faster. Okay, before we get to speed tests, a little bit of background. First and foremost, what are web standards? Why are they important? Where did they come from? Now, this is something I could write books about, but I've only got a little bit of time in this video, so let's just sum up really fast. Web standards are what we have now. It's a specification for writing web pages. Now, those pages have to follow certain rules for CSS, for HTML, for all that stuff that you guys don't need to know about. But it came about really because way back in the day we had Netscape Navigator and we had a newcomer, Internet Explorer. And eventually Internet Explorer became so dominant it crushed Netscape Navigator. But before they died, they rolled their code out, their source code, their rendering engine. Really what it is that displays the web pages, well they rolled that out to open source. The Mozilla Foundation was born and they grew Firefox. Firefox on the desktop was great. It was an alternative for Internet Explorer. You see, Internet Explorer 4, that was revolutionary. Internet Explorer 5, it was progress. 5.5, 5, that was a nice stable browser. Internet Explorer 6, well that's the one that put the nail in the coffin of Netscape and really there wasn't any progress after that. It stagnated, Microsoft rested on their laurels and they just didn't do anything. Then Firefox came around and all of a sudden it was a brand new game. Well, we know now that Microsoft has been trying and trying and trying to catch up and release a web standards compliant browser. You see, Chrome uses WebKit, Safari uses WebKit, Mozilla uses Mozilla, Firefox uses Mozilla, Opera uses some weird amalgamation of WebKit. We just won't talk about Opera. But they're all basically just web browsers that are trying to present web pages the way that the developer and the designer intended. Now that's easier said than done. Microsoft has been playing catch up. Internet Explorer 7 on the desktop was atrocious. Internet Explorer 8, which is what most of you have, it comes a long way from 7, but it's still not standards compliant. It doesn't support CSS3. I mean, that's insane. Okay, and then Internet Explorer 9, it's a lot better, but still not great. Windows Phone still doesn't have a standards compliant web browser in it. And I'm sorry, you guys, I know that's going to offend some of you, but it doesn't. There will be an update that will bring that up to Internet Explorer 9 Lite, if you want to call it that. It'll come out later because, well, Internet Explorer 9 for desktop hasn't come out yet. Okay? So, enough about standards. Let's move on because that's way longer than I wanted to go. So we've got browsers now. Browsers do things differently. Internet Explorer built into Windows. Everybody has it except the Europeans who get a choice. You guys are lucky. Over here, we have to try and educate our consumers and say, hey, try Chrome, try uh, Opera, try Firefox, try anything but what came with your machine. Firefox and Chrome do things better and faster than Internet Explorer, any version. Ridiculously faster. So, when we take that to a mobile device, that's where it's really kind of a game changer because, you know, we have a small device with limited resources, limited amount of RAM, limited processor, and really a limited pipe to get data. Uh, we'll come back to that uh, maybe a little bit later. But with all these limitations, you need to be super fast. Not only do you have to render the page, but you also have to scale it to fit that smaller screen if there's not a uh, 
you know, a native version, like PocketNow.com. You go to PocketNow.com on your Android, you're going to get a mobile-friendly version of the site. Well, not every site has done that. So the browser has to figure out what it should look like on your little screen and then scale up and down. It is really quite complex. On Android, the only choice that you've had really has been browser, the one that comes with it. Now, we've talked about Skyfire, we've talked about some others, Dolphin and whatnot, and they're great browsers, but they're still kind of fringe browsers like Opera. They're just kind of a fringe. They appeal to a certain set of people. They have some benefits. They have some disadvantages. But now we've got major muscle coming to the game, and that's Mozilla. Mozilla, for handhelds, used to be called Fennec. That was the code name. And they decided to rename it to just Firefox. That makes sense. The desktop version's popular. Why not have the same version on your mobile? So, there's all the background you need. We just had a new beta come out for Firefox. I believe it's 4.5 beta. And that's really what we want to see. So, there's all of your big, long introduction. If you didn't want to hear it, I assume you skipped it up until this point. So, what we're going to do now is I've got a Nexus 1 running CyanogenMod Mod 7 Gingerbread. And I've got a G2 running CyanogenMod Mod Gingerbread. They're both clocked basically the same speed gigahertz to gigahertz. They're both connected to the same Wi-Fi network, so we should have pretty much the same speed rendering, pretty much the same speed network-wise, and we're going to go through and run uh, not only some compatibility tests, but we're also going to run some speed tests. So let's go ahead and get right to that. All right, so using set CPU for root users, I'm going to head and set these so they're clocked the same. Minimum speed is going to be 245 megahertz, Maximum speed is going to be uh, just over one gigahertz, so they're running at the same core speed. So we're looking at the app drawer right now. Uh, on one side we've got ADW Launcher, on the other side we've got Launcher Pro. Not really that important. We're going to go ahead and fire up Browser on this side and Firefox on this side, just so you can see how fast each one of them opens. Now I've gone ahead and rebooted both of the phones right now. So neither one of them has anything recently loaded. There's nothing pre-cached. So you're going to see how long it takes to do the initial load. And I'll see if I can do this at the same time. So we open that up. Now you notice right here immediately it launches the browser. It goes to Google. Over here we have to load and load and load until finally we get that. So first load obviously goes over to Google's browser. And... Firefox comes in a disappointing second place. The Web Standards Project has put together lots of uh, different tests to make sure your browser is rendering stuff correctly. And all it is is a web page that has a bunch of uh, stuff on it, a bunch of HTML code, CSS, uh, JavaScript and whatnot, and it has a reference rendering, how it should render, and then it lets your, uh, your phone or your computer render it. So let's go ahead and run this and see how they do. So over here, this came up Hello World really fast. And for some reason, browser is not running it for some reason, which is really interesting. So the next test to run, of course, is Acid 3. Let's go ahead and run that now. Acid 3. Acid 3. And over here it says the browser is 93 out of 100, so not bad. Over here it took a little bit more time to complete, but we got 97 out of 100%. So very good over here. A little bit better on the Firefox side than on the browser side of things. And a lot better, of course, over here on the, uh, the Firefox side compared to browser in the Acid 2 test. Next up we've got html5test.com. What this website does is it checks your browser for HTML5 compatibility. Now recently HTML5 was renamed to just HTML, but I think the HTML5 moniker is going to stick around for a little while. So let's go ahead and go on both of these. Much faster over here on the browser side of things. A little bit slower on the Firefox side, but you can see obviously 176 out of 300 points with one bonus point, 207 with nine bonus points, 
out of 300. So much better HTML5 support on Firefox than on browser. This next test is a vulnerability test. It's by bcheck.scanit.be and what we've done here is we've loaded it up and we've said we want to run all available tests. It's noted that the browser name, version, and platform for both of these. So I was uh, incorrect. This is version 4.0 beta 5. Uh, I think I mentioned that incorrectly earlier in the video. Let's go ahead and uh, start the test for all available tests. Now, this is going to try and crash the browser. And that's what that message just said. Opens up a new tab, which over here it's showing you kind of a, a modal window and it says please don't close this window while the browser test is running it's being used by the test so we're going to go ahead and let that run now this takes a little bit of time so what I'm gonna do is um, go ahead and pause let the test run and then I'll report back with the results okay now with that last test neither browser crashed though both of them came up with unable to display page uh, on numerous occasions which is really a good thing it can't display pages that might be potentially harmful to uh, to the device. So all in all, they tied in that test. Next test up is SunSpider. SunSpider is a JavaScript benchmarking utility to see how fast the browser runs JavaScript. So the latest version is 0.9.1. Let's go ahead and start SunSpider now. A little bit faster over here off the off the start on browser. Firefox still looks like it's trying to think about it. And this is kind of boring. What it's doing is it's running through all these different JavaScript functions. Uh, some people call them methods, but they're really functions in JavaScript to do stuff like string.catnate, uh, math.round, math.floor, just all of these things that it's running through and running the tests to see how fast it can do all these things. And it's Got a little timer down here. I'll see if I can zoom in a little bit to show you that. So far, so good. I mean, it's cranking through this. It's not all that exciting because it's just running through those functions behind the scenes and updating the screen with what it's running and how long it took to complete. Now, over here on Firefox, this is the same test and it hasn't even started, apparently. So I don't know if this version of Firefox Mobile is incompatible with SunSpider, which would be a shame, that doesn't bode well, uh, or if there's just some other problem. But let's go ahead and let things run and see how browser does and see if Firefox catches up and starts to run it. Now even though it didn't show anything on the screen, Firefox actually came through and completed in approximately 2,779 milliseconds with a margin of error on that of plus or minus 3.6%. Over here on browser, however, it showed us what it was doing, but it only uh, uh, took quite a bit longer at 4,710 milliseconds with a margin of error plus or minus 7.9. Now to compare that, over on my desktop machine, running the latest version of Chrome. It's a dual core machine with two gig of RAM. Uh, I was able to complete the test in 627 milliseconds plus or minus one percent uh, margin of error. So significantly faster over there, most likely due to the dual core. But over here you can see a big difference, about twice as long over on browser as it was over on Firefox. Now that might have been because this was doing screen updates over on the browser browser, whereas this wasn't doing any browser, any screen updates in the Firefox browser. So that might have had something to do with it. So there's a whole bunch of tests, whether you like benchmarks or not, um, they're what they are, and you can kind of see where each one of them ranks. Now, you're probably not going to go out and do this on your own, so let's get into, uh, to just wrap this up, some real-world sites. Let's go to the same site on both of the browsers and see which comes up faster so you can get a feel of which one actually is going to look like it performs faster to the end user. Alright, so we're going to try and go to apple.com.
Over here in browser, it's up immediately just like that. Over here on Firefox, nothing. Now, this is not because Firefox can't display the Apple website or even the Pocket Now website. This is a bug with the beta version of the software where sometimes it will resolve the page and it won't display anything at all. And then what you need to do is exit the browser and restart it. So let me go ahead and do that and let's rerun this test and see what we can get. Now instead of closing the browser and reopening it, what I did was I swiped over to the side and I had a few tabs open. And when I say a few, I mean there were a total of three. And apparently that was too much for the browser to handle. So Firefox choked on that and it wasn't able to display the page. So let's go ahead and refresh this over here. And just so you can see how fast it loads, we'll go ahead and go on that to see how fast that one loads as well. Not at the same time, obviously, but they both come up and they both render the page pretty much the same. Now, in all fairness, let's go ahead and look at another website uh, similar to Apple and see how they do. So let's go ahead and try and go to Microsoft.com. Firefox got a little bit of a head start on that button push. Over here it says that mobile.microsoft.com wants my location. Do I want to share that or not? It also says the same thing over here in browser. So I'm going to share my location with that just because we can. Now if you notice, the pages are fully loaded. They look a lot different. Uh, over here in browser, it seems to look a little bit better than over in Firefox. If we zoom and try and get this to resize, you know, it's not looking all that great. So they load at about the same time, but definitely browser looks a little bit better. If you compare that to browser, on the other hand, this is on the phone already. The total, uh, including data and application, is 2.07 megabytes. So quite a difference there, and the factor of about seven times bigger for Firefox than for browser. Uh, and then the cache to do exactly the same thing was only 4.52 megabytes versus over here was quite a bit more than that. So which one should you use? It's up to you. Uh, I would recommend a browser because it seems faster on both of these phones. But if you want to go for raw speed, again, go with Firefox because it's more standards compliant, at least in this iteration. And because it's an option, it's an alternative. It's got some neat UI things that browser doesn't have which we didn't go into because this video was about speed and, and compatibility. So go ahead and try Firefox out if you haven't. Let me know what you think. That's what the comments are for down at the bottom. So make sure you leave us feedback. What do you think about browser versus Firefox? Uh, is there a test that we should have run that we didn't? Um, is there something you'd like to see? Or is there another browser that you run other than these two that is faster or better and why? Let us know in the comments down below. Of course, if you like seeing these kind of speed comparisons and compatibility comparison videos, give us a thumbs up so we know that you want us to keep shooting them. Head on over to pocketnow.com so you can see the write-up on this particular article, and I'll have links to those tests. So if you want to run them on your own mobile phone or even on your desktop computer, you'll be able to do that as well. Be advised that that one test, the vulnerability test, it tries to crash your computer, and if your browser isn't up to date, and if your antivirus software isn't up to date, it probably will. So I'm just going to put that out there right now. So a whole bunch of information. I hope you liked it. Of course, if you've got any feedback at all, leave those in the comment as in the comment section as well. And for Pocket Now, I'm Joe Levi.